Hi guys and welcome to Nick's Home Renovation. In this video I'll be showing you how to insulate a warm loft which is using this rigid insulation next to me here in between the rafters like you can see behind me and then eventually at a right angle across the rafters. For those of you that don't know um, I'm an electrician by trade and this is my 1936 bungalow renovation and obviously we're in the loft part of the extension that we are working on. Um, this is a how-to video, but I must stress that this is the first time I've ever done it and you see a lot of videos online and websites online saying you must use professionals and you must pay thousands of pounds for someone to come and do this job, um, but you really don't. Um, anyone can do it as long as you look for guidance and ask for a bit of advice. Um, it's really simple um, and you can save yourself a lot of money. So let me start by talking you through what you use. So this right here it's called rigid insulation um, and this goes in between the rafters so this is a hundred mil in depth and what you'll find is in a new build like this these rafters will be 150 mil deep so what you have to do is cut obviously to size measure top here and then also down here and then maybe again in the middle um, you'd think that all these rafters would be perfectly straight but they're not they're often 10 to 15 mil, mil out between top and bottom so you just have to allow, allow for this, um, either by cutting at a slight angle or cutting it straight and putting a saw down the side, for example, or just trimming a little bit. The important things before we get into the technical side of things is that it's really, really, really important to leave a 50 mil gap. So 50, 150 mil or 15 centimeter rafters, 100 mil insulation. This 100 mil insulation should sit flush, like you can see these examples here, with the edge of the rafters. This leaves a 50 mil gap at the back and that 50 mil gap is really important to let air flow and stop something called cold bridging, which is when the cold air from outside meets the warm air from inside and causes condensation, which obviously you do not want coming through to your loft. So let me show you this stuff. It is pretty nasty to be honest and it's pretty expensive too. Um, this is about £40 per sheet and to put into some scale, I'll take you around the room in a second, but I use 12 sheets on this side here, about say 10 meters worth of insulating. So 10 sheets at 40 pound, obviously quite a lot of money, 400 pounds just on here. So if you can do this labor yourself as well, rather than pay probably two guys to do it, you're gonna save a lot of money. Really recommend when using this, you'll see in my time-lapse video, I do throughout wearing a mask, wearing goggles, wearing gloves. It's not too bad on your hands, but when you cut it, all these fragments, you can see, might be able to see there on camera, go everywhere, up your nose, in your eye, and it's really horrible stuff. Um, mask is probably more important than the goggles, um, because it really can get in your nose, but yeah, I'd really recommend all the right PPE. Um, and again, if you need to hammer these in, make sure you've got your ear defenders on when you're hammering as well. So obviously this is one I prepared earlier. Um, I'll be putting this up here, so I didn't want to show you. You'll see my time lapse of me cutting it, measuring it. Um, it's all very time consuming. Um, this wall took me probably a nine hour day to do it, but it's three lots, goes all, runs all the way down to the bottom here. You have to insulate the entire roof um, for the building control to pass um, this renovation. So it's a long, long day, but so this is one I've cut earlier to save a bit of time. Um, I'm going to jump up on the insulation, which is probably something you shouldn't do. Um, you literally just put it in the rafter, making sure to leave that gap, which I'll show you more closely later on my walk around. And then make sure it's nice and tight, which you can feel, and then just give it a little bang so it gets in the right place. And so it gets nice and flush. In this case, I just have to pop up here, break it down. play around with it until you're happy uh, that there's as little gap as possible between the two insulation boards and you're happy that it's flush here. If you cut it slightly too short, um, that's not wasted insulation. You shouldn't have huge, have huge gaps, but you can always put a screw in there or a nail in there. And also likewise, if you're worried about not leaving that 50 mil gap, you can always clip a cable clip or a nail 50 mil from the edge up here so you don't 
push that in too far and it just sits against that or you can batten it out or, or other things as well. If you do have big gaps, you should probably seal it with a, a urethane sealant just to keep as little sort of gaps as possible um, is really recommended. Um, also in this, I'll show you, just because I will be doing this, it's a new build, it's slightly different. You can insulate with this stuff as well. It's obviously very difficult. This is a mineral wall and it's very difficult to put it in the rafters because it'll just fall down, fall down, unless you batten everywhere and lay it behind. You could use a hundred mil in that as well, but most people go for the rigid stuff because it is better. It's better at keeping the heat in, although it is more expensive than this. So this was about 27 pound a roll. This is about 40 pound um, for a sheet, but this stuff is better. But um, I'll show you a video later. I'm gonna do lots of time lapses during this. And I'll show you me putting this down as well. But this I'll be putting down around the edge. So I'll take you on a walk around now. And the mineral wall will be all in the floor of the, so the ceiling from below and this floor. And then all of this rigid board will be in the ceiling above and it should make this place nice and toasty. So I'll just show you this room for those of you that haven't seen it before. This is the extension to my bungalow. This will be where the stairs will come up eventually. Uh, funny shaped ensuite at the front, which I still haven't decided what I'm going to do. And then this will be a very long bedroom, admittedly with some reduced height here. Um, but you can see that I've boarded this left hand side all the way down to the bottom. Now, unfortunately, that was nine hours work. And I've got to do all of this side next, as well as obviously the ensuite and all of the surrounding floor or ceiling from below. So I wanted to show you a bit more in depth about what I was talking about back there. So as you can see there, that is my 50 mil gap. You must, must, must have that 50 mil gap and the insulation must be as flush as possible with these rafters, which you can see here. You see this small dent where I've tried to push it in, so this is obviously a really tight one. But as I said earlier, if you don't get it bang on, don't worry, you can put screws in there, nails in there, anything to hold it up. As long as you keep that air gap and then this stays nice and solid, that's all you want. And then this mineral wall stuff, I will be putting all across here. So I've insulated from below. You might be able to see, no, you can't see because of the joist. I've insulated already everything from below that you might have seen in some of my other videos, but I didn't do any of this because it's easier to do from above. So I've just got to insulate all of these with the 100 mil mineral wall insulation, and that will keep this place nice and toasty. So for now, that's it. Um, I will show you loads of time lapses of me doing the work and I'll also do a video again once I've done the 50 mil of insulation going over the top. So the 50 mil goes over the top to seal it in what you call a warm loft. Um, you can just do in between if you're doing one at home, but I'd recommend doing it properly and getting the 50 mil over the top. Um, and yeah, and have a go yourself. As you said, I'm not perfect, um, but it's doable. And um, just make sure you wear your PPE. <laughs> Good luck everyone.
Welcome back guys. I'm at a really good stage now. Um, I've got sort of all levels to show you. I've got the 100mm insulation between the rafters. Um, I've got the insulation at a right angle going across and I've also got some plasterboarding at the other end right at the back as well. So I'll take you around and explain what I've been doing and how you guys can do it yourself at home. So to show you the 100mm insulation, obviously I've showed you previously in this video and you've seen the time lapse me working. But that's the 100mm in between. I ran it all the way down there even though building regulations actually state I don't have to. Um, but I thought it's best if you're going to do a job to do it properly. Um, you've probably seen on the time lapse that I've been haven't done it on these joints yet, but I've been taping any joints um, to get rid of any gaps because in some examples the rafters are way out. Um, so even though you can cut, so say, say for example, if this rafter up here is 30 centimeters, well this bit of wall here, this timber, is 30 centimeters here and 31 centimeters here. You're always best cutting to 31 centimetres than just getting a saw and just cutting down the edges until you get it in perfectly. But sometimes even when you do that, you do leave gaps, so it's best to tape it to seal all that up. Um, then I've overboarded, so you can see here, in most domestic properties, this has to be 50 mil. Um, fortunately, because of the pitch of the roof and the council, that I work under here, um, it's actually only 20 mil as you can see here, so this is 20 mil. So it's quite fortunate for me because we don't have much head height as it is, so an extra 30 mil plus the plasterboard would bring that down another sort of 42 and a half mil. So that would really encroach in the area. But anyway, back to what I've been doing, the plasterboarding, so, and the insulating. So I've, as you can see, I've gone over everywhere at a right angle and I've used these fixings here so you definitely need these so that's just a normal plasterboard screw and then this is the fixing without the screw in and it just helps pull in the board so you obviously put it like that fix in obviously mark all of your joists coming down here this one fell in nice, nice, nicely with the line and then just use these to pull it all in nice and tight. You can probably see in the time lapse of my colleague and I of me doing that. And then down here is my last phase. So this is the plasterboarding. So it's really slow because obviously at this angle, really tough, definitely need two of you. And I'm here alone today, so I won't be doing any more of this until I get some help. Um, you probably saw we threw some more of this wall insulation in the ceiling first to fill any gaps and then we boarded from the ceiling all the way down and in the meantime I've also been insulating everywhere so I've been putting 200 mil along the floor in there and along the floor all down the sides and I've actually been doing even more so in the small roof back here with you probably can't see but that's 300 mil in there as per building requirements so i'll continue with the time lapse today i am putting the insulation in here so again you can put up to 100 mil in here because you've got 100 mil depth i don't have to put in 100 mil i'm putting in 50 mil um, because again i took the insulation all the way down so i made this zone even more insulated than necessary so I can put 50 mil in here and the room will be as watertight, especially as I'm, uh, sorry, as watertight, as insulated, especially as I'm using the extra firm thick stuff rather than just wall insulation. So that should be more than sufficient. behind me this room is now 99% plasterboarded I'm still waiting for the plumber to finish parts for me such as the radiators and the ensuite this way um, but it gives me a perfect example to show you everything I've done all the different layers of insulation so you guys can do it at home so this is the space I've been working on it's taken a couple of weeks on my own and with 
one guy for a couple of days to get to this stage. The bathroom still isn't ready, but I'll show you that as well as that also shows some different layers of insulation. Um, I've had to leave this access hatch here because the plumber has to get to the boiler below from here. So it gives me the perfect example to show you everything that's gone into this. So this is a 12.5 layer of plasterboard that goes over the top. This is my right angle 20 mil insulation that goes at a right angle over the original 50 mil or 100 mil in the rafters. And then this is the 50 mil in my in my wall there. So starting from all the way from the floor, I've insulated with this wall insulation 200 mil as per the building regs require. This is the hole that will lead to my boiler eventually and this boiler will vent out here. Um, and then I've got these 100 mil rafters. So the building inspector said I need to put 50 mil of insulation in there, leaving an air gap at the back, even though there's all this air gap here, but she said 50 mil is fine. Um, then on top, so there goes the 50 mil like this in between. I'll do it roughly. 20 mil goes across that. And then the plasterboard goes on top. So that's the three layers and slightly different measurements but in these rafters here you can see from the time lapses I've done and I'll put together for this video 100 mil insulation went in the ceiling here first in between the rafters so the rafters running down like that 100 mil insulation in there 20 mil went across now some councils require 50 mil to actually go across and you might as well do 50 mil if it's a loft space in your own house the only reason we didn't have to was because of the pitch here is already quite limiting you only have about six foot of height here and here this side so we were allowed to use 20 mil there um, the building control said that's absolutely fine with the plasterboard layer over the top coming through to the bathroom you can see again the different layers so we have obviously insulated in between the rafters which you can see here these will all be loose because again the plumber has to get back here to run pipes for a towel rail and a bath here so here's the 50 mil in between the raft uh, in between the the ashlar wall here's the 20 mil that will eventually go over the top once these are in 20 mil goes over the top and then plasterboard will obviously be fixed on after that so again that's all the different layers if you have any gaps because these were nice and tight but have become looser and looser from just the plumber accessing it, me accessing it for my cables. So just make sure to put expanding foam or tape across any gaps and that really helps um, seal all the gaps. And then you can see all this insulating I've done everywhere with the wall insulation, which is nasty stuff. Remember to wear a mask, but I've had to do that everywhere and all in the rafters over that side as well. And I've eventually got to do this flat roof, which will be the last job I'm doing. And the Eagle Eye people will now see I have a staircase, which is much handier. This will be my access door. Now I'm gonna put wood down there for nice storage. And then that's more insulation going both ways, all the way down to the end and between all the rafters. I need to fix some of these and tape some of these just near the gaps. They are taped down there, as you can see from my time-lapse, I'm sure. But that's it for now. Um, I'll do another one just when it's plastered so you can see the full effects, but I hope this video has been useful uh, for you guys trying it yourself at home. Cheers. And here is the final result. After two weeks of painstaking insulating, plasterboarding, and doing 90% of it myself, with the help of one other guy near the end for the plasterboarding. I'm proud to say this bedroom and ensuite down the end there are now finished. So it just goes to show that you can do it yourself. I am an electrician by trade and by no means I've done a lot of insulating before. But as long as you keep your gaps to a minimum, use any tape, for any gaps, just to do the best you can. It can be done. Really happy with how 
everything has turned out and the proof is in the pudding because up here is just a lovely warm bedroom and I'm really pleased with how it looks. So good luck to anyone trying it yourself and let me know how you get on.